The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host sitting with me is Julia. Hello. Yes, and... It, I know I said last show it was going to be two weeks, but uh, we all kind of fucked up. <laughs> well, uh, between Thanksgiving and technical difficulties, uh, we've had a couple setbacks. Yeah, that's. But it happens, you know. It. I mean, hell, it's been a while since Constructive Deconstruction had a new episode. But yeah, that that's another one of those things. You know, we have scheduling issues. I mean. I mean, I'm in Central Time. Julia, you're you're what Eastern Time? Eastern, yeah. Yeah. Namio is all the way over in Pacific Time, so scheduling. Well, although sometimes it you know it works out better. Um, I I try to do a little bit. I am a little bit constricted on scheduling, but hey, you know, that happens. Um. So yeah, it is December at this point, and every year that's been going on since about 2010. Uh, they have, you know, the uh, little internet reviewing community that, that this show is technically a part of in some way, shape, and form. Uh, they do a thing called Red Ribbon Reviewers. And if you go over to redribbonreviewers.wordpress.com, and if you actually spell it right, unlike I did my first time going over there because I don't have a bookmark because, hey, memory. Um, but if you go over there and you click about the project, it says uh, that it began in September 2010 as a way for internet-based video reviewers to spread awareness and discussion of, on HIV and AIDS. Through the simple act of wearing a red ribbon during re video reviews, which if you're watching this on the uh, video versions, you're going to see the red ribbon up there on the screen uh, along with the title card and everything. That's how, that's how we do it. <laughs> That's how we do it here. Um, and I actually have another review I can slate to uh, release this much this month. I can do as well. Um, it is hoped that the small but potent symbol will be recognized and discussed. That proper information about HIV, AIDS, and its prevention will be provided. And of course, along the bottom, there's a link to the site if you're watching it on the video version. And and uh, and, the, and the descriptions will also have it as well. Uh, if you want to go check it out, you can see other people that have that have. Uh, uh, sent in videos. Uh, I know one year we actually had uh, Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic, send one in. Uh, we've had Lacey Green send one in one year as well. Um, and, and a few others. Some of the, some of the more big name uh, reviewers out there have sent some in. Um, and the site does have uh, links to information about HIV and AIDS. Uh, you know, like what it is and where you can donate. All of that good stuff. Um, and... It actually ties in a bit with General Hospital too, because I don't know if you know this, Julia, because I know you weren't watching like, you know, Robin. yeah, Robin. I know. So okay, so you do know, yeah, that's right, because it, it does come up more often. Because I remember it coming up a lot more, or, or, or at least it seemed like it came up a lot more back in the day, back like within the first few Still. years. Yeah, which definitely one of the more tragic storylines in the '90s. Oh, that along with um, oh god, what what is her name? Um, 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 BJ. It's like it's like I wasn't. I mean, obviously I wasn't watching at the time. I was like twelve. I didn't give a shit about soap operas then. <laughs> um, but but I've seen like the uh, clips that they put on YouTube. And when General Hospital did their 35th anniversary special, they showed bits from that and bits from Robin and Stone. And e even just those bits, you can still feel the impact. Um. And even in universe, that's why the Nurses Ball got started. Because Nurses Ball in universe is to spread HIV/AIDS awareness, and in universe to help raise up money, um, you know, for research and all of that good stuff. But it's it's a big awareness uh, variety show. <laughs> uh, started in honor, you know, because of and in honor of uh, Robin in universe, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we discussed that all, of course, we discussed that in April, but we bring it up here because it does tie in with, uh, you know, HIV AIDS awareness, um, and all of that. I am, I am very clumsily doing this. I, I, I'm sure, I sure, I am sure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, again, redribbonreviewers.wordpress.com. Go check it out. Um, this should be up there. Uh, I'll just have to remember to poke Eli if I haven't done so by the time this goes live. <laughs> um, the 
the nurse's ball, uh, I think starting just with the resurgence of the nurse's ball in the past year or two, mm -hmm. partners with their real life, um, in, in real life with AMPAR, the Foundation for AIDS Research, mm -hmm. um, to do some actual fundraising and awareness. So it's more than just in universe for yeah. the hospital as well. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, at, at least at one point, I wasn't sure. But but I but I think you I think you might have it. I might that so that might be a clarification on my part because because it's like I kind of remember maybe I think that was true, you know, and obviously still is if if uh, going by what you're saying. Yeah, so, I don't know if it was originally, but definitely since they brought it back. Yeah. They've been partnering with Amphar. Yeah. So uh, so it's always a good thing, and and I found out the reason why they actually cut the nurses' ball back in the early 2000s budget. Yeah. Which is sad. It's like no, <laughs> but oh well. Ah, uh, so just a few months, nurses' ball should be coming around again. I hope, and and that'll be fun. And we'll bring it up again and see for and and that's kind of the beauty of this show, uh, because we do the red ribbon reviewers through this show. We talk about you know characters and and events that happen because you know they they want to raise money and raise awareness for HIV and AIDS research, etc., etc., etc. We could do it through the Red Ribbon Reviewers. Again, Red Ribbon Reviewers at WordPress.com. I'm going to be pushing that for this segment. And, and of course, the nurses' ball when it comes around in April. So we get to do it twice a year. And honestly, it would be it would be great if you know if everybody just you know even if it's not December or whatever, go check out the site. You know, the Red Ribbon Reviewer site. You know, because you'll get yeah you know, again information, entertainment. What more can you ask for, right? <laughs> Oh, so, so it's it's going to prove to be a lot of fun. And in fact, um, looking at the th at the thing, there's already a few. Uh, there's actually a few uh, uh, reviewers that are already up there for this year, which I think is this year. Um, yeah, uh, including uh, the Media Wiz, uh, the Nostalgia Kid, and Critical Kid. I guess the crossover review, a, a bunch of other reviews that I've not really been familiar with lately. But we'll have the We'll have the bigger ones uh, coming in throughout the month, I'm sure. As long as people, you know, remember it. <laughs> like we do. And if you hear any screaming in the background, we have one child here, and he, for whatever reason, has decided to go on a screaming fit. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe it has something to do with him being spoiled. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of spoiled children, uh, let's get into the last two, technically two and a half weeks, because Thanksgiving week was a half week. Um, and so with Thanksgiving coming around, we see some plot lines start to supposedly come to an end, but not really, because uh, Faison came around and it was, it was, and it was touted like he was really uh fake luke but not really i i gotta say i totally bought it <laughs> totally bought it so good on them because um you know with with soaps you know you kind of get used to the rhythm of them and you can kind of gauge the bullshit typically and i'm, I'm usually better about gauging the bullshit but i totally totally bought it that phase on was fake luke yeah, I I honestly couldn't because it's like no that, that that's that would be more of a cop out I I would think because it's like for one thing Faison I, I don't think he's really quite as tall as Luke I mean I think their heights are similar but there not similar enough logical. yeah I know yeah there I go being watchful <laughs> but um but even then just some of his behavior Faison if, if you know as, you know of course. You know, by this point now, we all know that Faison was not really fake Luke. It was a diversion to throw off the trail of the real fake Luke, who still has the real Luke locked up somewhere in a basement. I don't remember where it is, but but the basement looks familiar. I know that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I think it was the same one that they had, I want to say, Laura at one point, when they were yeah. going around looking for uh, Lulu. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah... Uh, but some of the things that fake Luke has done, namely like hitting on Kiki, nearly raping Kiki, that's kind of out of character for Faison. Especially at that point, during the time frame that that would have happened, he would have been all over Anna. True, true. Which which I did, you know, and I, I think I mentioned either on my Tumblr or, or the last time we talked that that was a reason that I thought it wasn't Faison because, you know, he's so in love with Anna. But by the time they, you know, with the mask and the whole bit and, you know, they've, 
done the masks before. So I was I was willing to be like, okay, maybe I was wrong. And then, of course, they were messing with us. And we still don't know who he is. Yeah, although with some of the things that the fake Luke was saying, it's making me think, oh, God, are they really going the Bill Eckert route? Really? They're really going to go with Bill? Okay, um, uh, sure. I don't know if, I, if I'm on board with that, with that uh, theory either, though. Yeah, I, I admit that's it would seem one of the more logical things, given what we know so far, considering it's not plastic surgery, it's not a mask. Although... Do we, do we know that it's not plastic surgery? Yeah, I think he stated right out that it wasn't plastic surgery. It was all natural. I believe. Um, but it, it's either that or... I, I was actually looking up at the recaps on Soap Central. And and you know how some of their some of their writers, they'll have like scoops or whatever, talking about the previous week or two or what have you. And somebody mentioned... you know, the, I forget the writer... But they mentioned that uh, maybe Helena grew him in a Petri dish or something, and it's like a clone of Luke, which I think that would be kind of interesting. I mean, it's not – it's nothing – it's not too – it's not really original for soaps because I think there was one that did it like when the whole uh, clone sheep thing was really big or what have you. But doing it now, considering – that you've got you've got Helena, you've got Phazon, you've got Jerry Jacks, you've got uh, Lord Ashton, all of them just kind of teamed up together. Considering considering Phazon and Helena alone, that the, their families and, and their organizations have more scientific background, more science fictiony backgrounds, that's more plausible. So it is very plausible that it could be literally a clone of Luke. This is probably way out there in, in the ball field, but it, it's possible. Uh, I mean, it's not like General Hospital hasn't done science fiction before. <laughs> uh, and and what Anna did to Phazon, we, we found that out too. I mean, we found out they just stuffed him in a hole. And he got out of the hole. Good going, Anna. Good going, yeah. Practically right away too. And it's like, why would you do that? I mean, yeah, okay, you're going to put him away somewhere, and he, he, this this is a villain that cannot be contained in Steinmauer. Which... I, I gotta say, Anna seems to have quite a lot of faith in Robert, and it's not that that, not that, that is misplaced, but yeah. she seems to extend that to anyone who purports to work for Robert. You know, yeah. like when they when they were breaking into Crichton Clark mm -hmm. to try to save everybody, and this team shows up, team of guys shows up, and they tell her, "Oh yeah, Robert sent us," and she's like, "Oh great, let's carry on without checking credentials or checking in with Robert." She just kind of took their word for it, and in that instance, that turned out to be true. I was surprised, and they yeah. helped her and they got everyone out. But in this case, this guy who was supposed to be checking up on Faison that Robert sent so that Anna didn't have to deal with it, you know, completely double-crossed them and let Faison out almost instantly. Yeah, to go and wreak havoc and, and terror and everything else. Right, if you want something done right, Anna, you know, yeah. do it yourself. Yeah, which I, I am kind of glad that she didn't kill him. I, I am very glad that she did not kill him because, for one thing, killing him off for real that would that would rob you of a really great villain. You know, yeah. I mean, and I, and I know the actors are getting up there in age; and they they will eventually pass on. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's hope let's hope that before that happens, they go out in a with 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 a huge bang. You know, that that would be just the perfect way to go out. If you're going to kill off your villain for real, have him go out with a bang. And I don't mean just a bullet to the forehead either. I mean like climactic fighting or whatever. Somebody getting tossed off a cliff or something. Or into an ice chamber. Who, who knows? <laughs> Although not everybody dies for real in an ice chamber. Stavros. <laughs> I mean Stavros was straight up shot. You know he's going to be back at some point. I mean he kind of has to. <laughs> uh, but uh, the way the way they managed to pull the wool over everybody's eyes concerning Luke was, you know, they swapped him out right as Julian was leading Alexis to go get him out of of uh, 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 not, you know, was it Fern? No, ah, oh, goddammit. it, 
Not Ferncliff. Um, 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 Miss Cabbage. Miss Cabbage. Yes. And, of course, right before they get there, Luke has the heroic resolve, rips out of his straight jacket, which I thought was fucking awesome. And he opens the door, and there's fucking Helena. God damn it. Ah. Uh. This is this is the point of this is the point in the show where you start playing Elton John. Just <laughs> and if you do, and if you have to ask which song, look up his discography, look up the general opinion of Helena Cassidyne, you will get it. <laughs> I think that was the case of do not explain the joke, but but of course Helena goes and she talks with Luke and she tells Luke all these things and then at some point just they get the switch. I think she knocked Luke out or something. Or somehow Luke got knocked out. And so, of course, they rescue the fake Luke, unbeknownst to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> and although, to be fair, up until that reveal, it was, like, all heartwarming when Luke made it back to the Quartermain Mansion. Yeah, I was so disappointed that it turned out not to be him. And poor Tracy. Yeah. It's like she's gonna be devastated once the truth comes out. The real, you know, truth comes out. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, Tracy, no. <laughs> oh, and, and and of course, Luke. You know, this is fake Luke. They they not only. Oh God, just you know his scene with Michael, when you know when Michael mm-hmm. came in and talked with Luke. Luke being a little bit more ruthless when it comes to Sunny. Especially knowing that it's like, uh, yeah, they're friends, I, and and I know Luke. I don't think Luke would. I don't. I definitely don't think Luke would have stood behind Sonny for what Sonny did to AJ. You know, yes and no. I. I don't think he would have thrown him under the bus quite so brutally. Right. That's that's kind of where I'm going. It's like, Luke. Luke wouldn't have done that. He would have just, you know, like, yeah, you know, you fucked up. You know, I can't help you. That sort of thing. You know, I'll still be. You know, I don't know. I don't know if he would still be his friend, but you know, the real Luke would not have just, whoosh, hey, under the bus there, Corinthos. How do you like it? You know, I, I don't think he. I don't think the real Luke would have done that. No, no. It was a very uncomfortable conversation. Yeah, very much so. Oh, uh, oh, God, and and oh, dear, 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 dear. Um, let's see, where else? Um. It's now known that Rick was framed. You know, Alexis knows, Molly knows. Well, oh yes, yes, Molly knows that much. I, well, first things first, I am so glad to see Molly again. It feels like it's been forever. Mm -hmm. So that's been lovely. And also, on a totally shallow note, just real quick, her hair looks fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. She looks great. I will agree. Um, I'm really, really loving that she's not... Uh, uh, letting her mom off the hook on this either. Like, I love Alexis, I do. Mm-hmm. But I think that she did not act uh, as well. She, I don't think she handled the situation as well as I would have hoped she would have. And I think Molly is completely 100% justified in her response. And so I think Rick turning out to be alive is going to go a long way to fixing their relationship. But I like that we're seeing... You know, not a, you know, rebellious teen phase just for the sake of being a rebellious teen, but that Molly is actually has completely legitimate, you know, issues with Alexis and her choices with Julian, and um, I'm so sad that Rick isn't back yet. You know, they're dragging out this return, but I'm glad that it's giving Molly, like, a really great storyline which they sometimes seem to struggle with finding good storylines for the teens like that whole hot mess of a fake dating thing a while back um yeah. but this is really excellent material and Haley poulos is a gift i mean she she's is. kicking ass definitely definitely i i cannot agree more with that uh you know in, ter- in terms of writing they may- maybe they should get the writing team that was responsible for like uh the lucky liz nicholas emily stuff that was going on in yes. the late 90s yeah bring them back on you know they know how to write fucking teenage stories right there i mean although granted it it was helped a little bit that uh you know in terms of writing that liz was raped and emily was being blackmailed mm. well i mean those were 
those I mean, were writing choices. Yeah. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. You know. Yeah. You know, it helped. It helped add the drama and, and draw the characters a little closer together. At least that's how I feel about it. <laughs> you know. I mean, obviously, you know, the 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 rape itself is obviously a horrible event to the character, obviously. But you know, in terms of writing, you know, it helped bring them a little closer together, got them to bond a bit, and in and in the end, made them all better people. I think that's. I, I think Liz actually falls under the, the uh, rape portrayed as redemption trope, which – well, first time I saw that, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, because that, that, that is a trope that will always throw me off. It's like, wait, wait, rape portrayed as redemption. That, that seems a little, kind, of, kind of a little slut shamey, I think. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's, it can definitely be a sort of problematic way to, to handle it. Mm-hmm. How, and, and soaps, you know – make everything as dramatic as possible and they have used rape i mean i'm sure every soap has done this multiple times for for different purposes Mm -hmm. and while i think they sometimes can do a very shit job of handling that material in a respectful way Mm -hmm. i think liz's storyline was one of the better the better uh, ways I've seen it done in soaps. I will say sometimes it seemed that they made it a lot about Lucky instead of about Liz, but they were dealing with that whole bit yeah. of him finding out what had happened with Luck with uh, with Luke and Laura. So I so I get why he was so involved with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I mean I think they did a fairly good job. Um, I'm just gonna redirect us back to the present. Not that yeah. I don't want to talk about the history, but we have a lot to get through from the past. Oh yeah, week. oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so just back to you know Molly and Rick and Alexis and Julian and the whole bit. Yes, and we find out that Rick is missing, and based on what Johnny is saying in prison, he was kidnapped by somebody, and Johnny knows who. Oh, which which again, this go this goes to Pentonville. Uh, cause Sonny, he, he, he learned very quickly that, um, yeah, he, 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 he got his ass kicked, literally just his, his ass, his face and, and everything. He got the shit beat out of him, which, which on the one hand is like, okay, yeah, it, you know, it's something that happens. I don't feel too sorry for him. I mean, it's like, I feel sorry enough to where it's like, yeah, on the one hand, but on the other hand, that's, I, 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 I want to say that's probably one of the more brute re- brutish realities in the prison system, especially if you are a well-known mob boss that everybody hates in a prison where the guards look the other way most of the time. Well, and not to mention, he and Johnny have serious history, mm-hmm. um, not least of which is how Sonny treated Johnny's sister-slash-mother, um, not that she's both. She yeah. is his mother. He thought she was his sister for anyone who wasn't watching when Claudia, uh, Sonny, Sonny's ex-wife, one of many, uh, was on the show. Um, so I'm not surprised that Johnny was, you know, establishing his territory. And I'm sure he enjoyed watching Sonny get the crap kicked out of him in any case. Yeah. So. I'm not. I may not surprise him. Ba also don't really feel that bad for Sunny. Yeah. In this case. Because it's like you know he gets he does get away with a lot and he did get away with a lot over the years, you know. And to see any kind of comeuppance, I, I think is a good thing, you know. And in this case, in this case with like the violent beating or whatever, um, it's on the again on the one hand, yeah, he's he's getting some kind of comeuppance, but on the other hand. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, that, that's so low on the list, like of everything yeah. that's going on with him and with Michael and with Carly right now. Like, yeah, I doubt he cares even about the beating that much. Yeah, and especially when he was talking to Carly and essentially breaking up with her. Oh my God, Sunny! I love, I love Sunny. Mm-hmm. I love Sunny and Carly. Yeah. I don't love that Sunny keeps telling Carly what's what. Sonny decides we're going to be together. Sonny decides we're not going to be together. And he's and he's not really giving her a say. 
Yeah. And I just kind of want to deck him. So, really, I guess I enjoyed Johnny kicking his ass or having his ass kicked. Um, and I love that Carly, you know, recognizes that. You know, she's not just, you know, Carly is not passive. Right. You know, she recognizes what he's doing and she resents it. And she says as much to Jake or Jason, as we know. Um, and I just love that she's able to she just kind of trusts him Mm -hmm. and she doesn't know why yeah well she'll it's jason yeah it's 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 like her gut is telling her it's jason even though nobody really knows except for helena and and Mm -hmm. i don't even i don't even know if fake luke even knows or phazon or anybody else no no i don't think i don't well i don't know about phazon but i i because if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think on Friday, just this past Friday's episode, a fake Luke was asking Helena who it was, and she didn't, she wouldn't tell him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, but but yeah. As far as Carly not being passive, that that is a credit I will give her. She she is anything but passive. Mm-hmm. She she is stubborn. <laughs> She is. I will say, though, um, you know, as annoyed as I am at Sonny, mm-hmm. um, which I am, like, 80% of the time, even though I love him, but <laughs> I, I do think he's right about one thing, which is, while, I mean, never, okay, never say never on a soap, but right. while it may be too late for Sonny and Michael to fix their relationship ever, mm-hmm. I do think that Sonny is right that Carly and Michael could still maybe you know, get to a better place. Now, I, I, I personally think that Michael and Sonny, eventually, it may take years, it may take a really long time, yeah. I do think they could eventually work things out. But I think Sonny's right that Carly stands a better chance of working things through with Michael. Yeah, definitely. And that if she's visiting Sonny every every other day, that's much less likely to happen. So I'm not saying he's completely wrong, but I, I do think it's shitty of him to be like, well, you can show up if you want to, but I won't see you. You know, like, I'm just going to make that decision for us. Yeah. Um, I mean, so. I mean, I, I, can, I can see where he's coming from. I can see where she's coming from. And one thing that is, that is kind of telling, which was pointed out by one of the Soap Central writers, was when Carly was talking to Jason about, you know, the circumstances. I think it was Jason around the, about the circumstances around AJ's death and everything, saying that Sonny shot him to, because he was, you know, because AJ was trying to kill Ava or what have you, which while it was true, AJ was already off of Ava and thus no longer a threat. Yeah, but but her point was he could have they could have argued it in trial. Yeah, I mean, this is true. whether or not, you know, th- that's something that the lawyers would have had to work out. I mean, Diane, whatever, brought in Franco's freaking brain tumor. Like, this justice system is not exactly, perhaps, as it is in real life, you know? Yeah, so, considering... I'm sure Diane could have made a good argument for yeah. protecting Ava. Yeah, considering the judge is keeping Max, is, is threatening Maxie with, with keeping her away from her baby... For however long, if she sees Nathan, who is a fucking cop, mm-hmm. you know, it's like because he is he's dangerous lifestyle, and it's like it's like motherfucker, she was just kidnapped by some lunat by by some lunatic fake Aussie, and and stowed away in a fucking clinic with him. In the end, it's like come on, it's not her fault. You know, the same fake Aussie that you know, sabotaged everything. And then, and then of course the judge has uh, the judge. Uh, ha- okay. In reality, if a judge has like a, a bone to pick with somebody because they lied to him, not even under oath, but they lied to him. Would, would, would that judge, should that judge be al- even allowed to preside on a case where that person might even be a remote factor? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I'm, it's it's a total toss up on General Hospital if things are gonna make sense in a real world setting or not, you know. True. So uh, there's there's no there's no guessing there's no foresight. This is true, and, and this is the same universe that has uh, weather machines, aliens, vampires, angels, and people living down in wells for months at a time. I know that's a different soap opera, but they're all in the same universe. 
<laughs> which which soap was that? Uh, that was all my children. Okay. Yeah, that was like a long time ago. Oh, but yeah, just shit, man. Oh, so we're okay. So we've got, we've got. Oh, oh, Jason. It turns out he is a sleeper cell, for lack of a better term. Oh. Thanks to Helena, because she because she learned how to mind control people better, and she doesn't <laughs> need the fucking ice princess anymore. Oh shit. And and she got Jason to bust Phazon out of jail. As they were getting ready to transport him to to Pentonville, he grabbed Sam, used her as a hostage shield, and well, you know they got he got Phazon away after shooting Nathan. Obrecht was pissed. Oh yeah, we got to talk about that. I mean, not just Obrecht being pissed, but that um the circumstances under which she found out Nathan had been shot uh was Phazon, Britt, and Obrecht were planning to run away. And when they found out that Nathan had been shot, Britt was going to stay because she didn't want Nathan to be alone. And Obrecht convinced her to go so she would be safe from whatever charges Nicholas would bring against her. And Obrecht uh, gave up the love of her life, Faison, to stay with her son. Yeah, that's... Which was kind of a lovely moment. It was. It's like, aww. And Faison, for him, for him, is like, he's coming around. He is... He told Anna outright, "I am not under your spell anymore." And it's like, it's like, which was like, shocking. Yeah, it's like, frankly. wait, what? Well, I mean, you know, love—the person you love most throws you in a hole, and and subjects you to things that you know really go against the Geneva Convention. <laughs> I, I I think that would break a lot of. I, I think that would break a lot of holds. Just saying. <laughs> well, he's never exactly been the, you know, most logical you know, all together there kind of guy. No. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if he stayed enamored, but it was kind of nice that he, uh, that he is not anymore, um, which kind of opened the door for Obrecht just in time for her to choose uh, her son instead of her love that she's been waiting for for oh so long. Yeah. Um, which was, an, you know, a nice moment for Obrecht. I'm not going to say that she's on the path to redemption or anything, because I still don't trust her as far as I can throw her. Right. But it is nice that she does get these more humanizing moments with her children. Yes. Complex Let's villain say. characters. Hell yeah. Yes. Uh, Which, okay, from here, mm -hmm. we could go to Nathan and Maxie. Oh, yeah. Or, or we could go to, speaking of complex villain characters... Uh, the uh, Franco Nino show, Franco and Nina show. So ah uh, yes, Franco and Nina. An yes, well we can hit we can hit them up real quick because they're they're relatively simple. You know, you know they ran away to Canada to Franco's hiding place, and and they're having bonding moments with the baby. Uh, I I want to say I think by this time he had convinced Nina and and got through to her that yes she did not. No, she did not push this baby out of her own loins. This baby belonged to somebody else. You know, see the reality of the situation. And Franco decided, you know what? I'm going to help you because you're my friend. And that's what friends do. And and a fan of his came to the door and recognized him. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, no, 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 no. I just have one of those faces. Somebody looks like me. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's an actor who looks like me. Uh, that sort of thing. But she wasn't convinced, and Nina convinced him because, you know, safety of the baby to to, you know, do something about that problem. And mm -hmm. Franco was going to presumably go kill her. Yeah. And it's like, ah, dude. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I can understand why. I mean, in in his mind, he's protecting his family. I mean, as as ill gotten as it was, it was his family, and in his mind, he was protecting them. You know, harm would come to that family. See, well, you know, okay, here's where we might differ slightly. Right. Because while I agree that they have... Okay, so they have formed this little family unit. Mm -hmm. Unlike Nina, Franco does not tend towards the delusional. Mm -hmm. So Franco knows exactly 
what he's doing. Oh, right. He, he knows that Nina has stolen the baby. He knows that the baby is not theirs. He may have uh, justified it to himself, but he's not delusional. So yeah. I hold him fully 100% responsible for everything that he has done and is doing, including enabling Nina. Yeah. So I... I don't. I wouldn't say I understand that he was just defending his family. With N- Nina, I would. Nina, I'm more lenient because I think she legitimately needs mental help. Whereas mm-hmm. Franco is just kind of awful. Yeah. Willingly. Yeah. And and yeah. No matter how you justify it, he was going to kill an innocent person. Who would who would have done anything for him? And as well, you know, including not told anybody about him. So it's like, yeah, a little, little, little much. I mean, no matter how you justify it. And and then, of course, everybody shows up. Silas and Morgan and Kiki and Ava and the cops all independently track him down. With the, the Mounties! Yes, the Mounties! That was so great. <laughs> that is awesome. And throughout all of this, while, while um, Nina, not Nina, but um, Ava and Silas were looking for them. Uh, you know, Silas finds out that Ava killed Connie, and he is pissed. Very justifiably so. But in the end, he's like, okay, you know what? We're going to find your daughter. We'll, we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll worry about the rest later, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, A. Because, you know, hey, kid. You know, she never held her kid. Got to give her at least that much. And the writers did. The writers did give her at least that much so far. I am... I am so heartbroken. I know that Ava's killed people. Whatever. I get it. She needs to be held responsible for her actions. But to have that, like, one beautiful moment with Ava and Morgan and their baby and fight me, so help me, that baby better be Morgan's and not Sonny's. I'm going to be furious. And they have that beautiful little moment where they've got her back in their arms. And then... And then Dante arrests so, her dashed two pieces yeah that, that is one of those things yeah, the harsh reality comes in like 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 a artfully done flashback sequence brought back to harsh reality by somebody's neck breaking <clears throat> um what i re- what i referenced my own reviews really yes i did <laughs> oh but but yeah that was that was one and of course franco when he walked out he he had what looked like looked like he had the baby so he's walking around, presumably with this baby, and 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 I admit, at first I was thinking, okay, maybe he's just gonna go return the baby or something or what have you, because it hadn't been revealed. You know, that, that was that that small part of my mind. He's okay. He's in the end gonna return the baby, make up some excuse or what have you. But no, he gets caught, and everybody he's threatening things, you know, threatening the baby, and he tosses the bundle down, and everybody freaks the fuck out. You know, because, you know, he, you, you, they thought he threw a baby down there. Turns out to just be a bag of flour. And then everybody's like, what the fuck, man? And even I'm like, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Ah. Uh. Well, I will say that's one thing, very pleased with myself, that I didn't buy. Because, A, well, Franco, while I believe the worst of him in most instances, mm-hmm. I don't think that he would ever hurt a baby, much less that particular baby whom he purports to care about um but also it didn't you know they've definitely had a real baby on set for all these other scenes and all of a sudden he was holding it where you couldn't see the baby at all and holding it in a very strange position and it just kind of looks like a bundle of blankets and i was like he doesn't actually have the baby with him does he and then of course as soon as he picked it up to drop it he kind of squeezed and you could tell i mean it was just a bundle of blankets or or something squishy i mean definitely wasn't a baby so i did figure that one out redeeming myself from believing that Jason was fake Luke. Yeah, that happens. Um, but he, he definitely uh, uh, convinced Ava and Morgan, because they both, I mean, fled to the ground. They were terrified for their poor baby. Yeah. Who wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, but because Silas was with Nina and the baby at that moment. Oh, yeah. And Silas, he was, admittedly, he was lying to her. But he was saying all the things just to get her to calm down, get, you know, everything there. And then everybody else comes up, and Nina's like, oh my god, you fucking betray me, you asshole. 
I which really she should have seen coming. Yeah, yeah. I don't care how crazy you are. You, you could have seen that coming, especially especially knowing how how she has seen Silas. Yeah, you know, since everything has started coming out. It's like, yeah, this is the guy who betrayed you. This is the guy who said your marriage was over when he found out all the bullshit you were pulling. What makes you think he would be that forgiving that quickly, that relatively quickly? No, 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 no. Although to his credit, when she was breaking down after they got the baby away from her, you know, he stayed and, you know, was like, hey, 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 you know, held her, comforted her a little bit, let her cry on him. Because that's the kind of guy he is. You know, those, yeah, Silas, Silas is, a, is a pretty stand-up guy. He's, you know, I, I don't think that, um, that he is, like, I, I don't really understand why he's, like, catnip to, like, this myriad, all these myriad women. But, you know, he, he is a stand-up guy, and he's trying to do the best he can. Um, you know, he's even was willing to, um, it took some convincing, but he was willing to help Ava despite the fact that she was wanted for murder. He recognized, you know, that the most important thing was getting the baby back. Um, so, you know, he did what he, uh, did what he had to do. Yeah. So, and, and he, yeah, Silas is a great guy. Speaking of great guys, hi, Nicholas. We, 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 we touched on him a little bit. Ugh. Uh, cause he found out, of course, that Brit had, you know, basically helped Spencer run away for a few for a few months, or was it just weeks? Months. It, it was for a while. It was, I think, a few days. Okay, in universe, definitely a few days, but. Oh, oh. But okay, yeah. but it was long enough to drive Nicholas a little bit more insane, you know, with worry and grief, and Brit was there and. Uh, amazingly, Elizabeth was never available. Gee. <laughs> and then Spencer comes back, and and it all started after Faison showed up at Windermere, you know, said all the flowery things to to uh, to Obrecht, and Obrecht is gushing, and, and of course, at one point, she's like, you know, one, you know, I, I think Britt was wanting to let people know Faison was out and about, and and Obrecht threatened. Um, Brit with the blackmail about her relationship again, right as Nicholas came in. Now, uh, I gotta say, I feel zero percent sympathy for Nicholas. Maybe not zero. Maybe like twenty percent, because I railed against him the first time he just had Brit move in with him, and then the second time after all the shit she pulled, and he was like, oh, not just let's get back together, but yeah, move back into my home. Be a mother figure for my son again. Mm-hmm. Like, what did he expect? Yeah, it's just, yeah. God damn it, man. I mean, think. I mean, I know she, I know at that, at that point, the way he saw her, you know, she was there. She was, she was a good friend. She was comforting to him and, and, well, let's be honest. She's a she's a nice looking woman too, you know. But that doesn't mean you move her back in immediately once things are reconciled to the point to where you can actually stand to be with her for more than five minutes. I mean, take it a little slower, man. And yeah, Nicholas has a compulsive problem. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, and besides, you're a fucking Cassidine prince. You can have just about any woman you want. Well, okay, maybe not, but obviously. Because, well, I don't think he could have Elizabeth right now. <laughs> Which is very, very understandable, considering I think the last conversation they had was like... I, I think... Oh, God, I want to say he was like... I want to say she was feeling like, you know, you know, a backup option, for lack of a better term. That, that's what my brain is trying to tell me. But yeah, they, not... they didn't exactly leave off on a good note yeah. uh, with Nicholas and Liz. Although, you know, it's... <sighs> They're so weird with each other, you know, they, they're they just, their timing is always off. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, for, literally from the beginning of their dance, you know, back and forth. Um, and I, I get how, you know, she feels a little tugged around, you know, when she's with someone, then he wants her, and then 
when she's not, he doesn't, and he just keeps changing his mind, and well, she kind of does too, and it's just this whole hot mess, and I really think that they both need to close that door for real, because I'm sick of it, so I can only imagine how they must be feeling. Yeah. Um, and now I think Liz is maybe, maybe starting to harbor some feelings for her house guest, uh, which would not thrill me, but would not surprise me. Yeah. Um, and with, you know, Rick hopefully making an appearance soon-ish, you know, I never thought I'd say this because back when Rick was on the show, um, n- not the, not this last time mm-hmm. when he came around, but he's done some severely fucked up shit. And I, you know, when he, when they first announced he was coming back, I was like, please stay far away from Liz and Molly and Alexis and Carly and all of these women that mm-hmm. you've done these horrible things to and just don't do anything to sit in the corner and think about what you've done. Um, but I, I gotta say, I kind of believed him when he said he was trying to make a change and trying to do better. And I kind of liked him trying to win Liz back. Yeah. So I really hope Liz doesn't get sucked back into Nicholas's, you know, vortex. Um, and I hope she doesn't get too attached to Jake. Um, because I kind of want to see Liz and Rick make a go of it. And, of course, I want, you know, Jake to find out he's Jason and, and get back with Sam. But, yeah. you know, that's a whole other story. Well, well, not only find out he's Jason, but remember it. Because <laughs> Helena Good told him outright. <laughs> Good point. Oh, and... and... And uh, after Nick, after Nicholas kicked Britt out for good and, and decided, yeah, you know what, I'm going to fucking press charges on you, which that's his right. You know, I'm, I'm not going to argue that because technically she did help, you know, a kid run away from home and, and, and endangered the life of a child. That's understandable. So yeah, I, 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 I should amend my earlier statement. Well, I don't feel that bad for Nicholas because he should have known better. I do think he was 100% in the right oh, yeah. to kick Brit out because that was about his kid and that's not okay. That's not cool. Yeah. So that, that I'm, I'm totally on board with that decision. Um, but I think he should have known better. Either. Yeah. Yeah. And, and me being a fan of Brit basically, because you know, I, even I'm saying like, yeah, dude, how, 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 you know, I mean, and it is again justified that he's calling the sick of the law after her. It's still justified. I mean, yeah, she was more or less manipulated to a lot of things. She is, she is more easily manipulatable than Clay. It's like, <laughs> it's like Jeebus. Um, it's like she tries to do good things, but then she gets manipulated by 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 her insecurities. Or by this or that or what have you. It's it's. I think I think that's her big thing. Her biggest flaw is that she is insecure, and through that insecurity, she allows herself to be manipulated into doing the things that she's done. She well, still has to be held accountable to those things. Yeah, sure. sure. And I mean, it's no wonder with a mother like that. I mean, yeah. they've come a long way, but I mean, if anyone is surprised by such a you know gorgeous successful doctor lady having such severe insecurity issues i point you to her mother oh because yeah. that woman w- would give uh, i don't even know that woman mm. would give anyone insecurity yeah um in self-worth issues yeah and um, not just her know, mother but also her father well yeah well yeah yeah but i mean i think while his absence was a big deal, I think, you know, Obrecht was a more formative influence, you know, and so she spent her whole life hearing, you know, if only you'd been a son, your father would have stuck around, if only you were a boy, you know, if only you were good enough. Yeah. Um, just this woman, you know, and, and I enjoy Obrecht as a character, but I think she's a terrible, terrible mother. Yeah, and and honestly, the the... The way she sees Nathan as like a chance to kind of make things a little bit better, it's coming across at least to me that Obrecht is at least wanting to rectify the mistakes that she made with Brit, even though she yeah. keeps committing them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, with Nathan, maybe do the thing right, even though Nathan's fully grown. Mm-hmm. You know. Which 
side note, I have no idea how old Nathan is supposed to be, because they talk about how, like, 20 years ago, when Nina was put into a coma, he was about five. But if that man is 25, I will eat my microphone, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I do not believe that. Uh, well, 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 it doesn't say when in the 90s, so, I mean, it could be, well, it can't be any later than maybe, what, what, 1993? Oh, I have no idea in terms of years. I just, I just mean like th that's how they talk about it. They talked about Nina was in the coma for twenty years, so, and and then and they talked about how she, when she went into the coma, mm -hmm. he was five. Yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah, I would. That but, would. I mean, at least. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, there there have been people who look older than what they are. I mean, hell, in I high know. school, hell, in high school, I was told I looked like I was in my thirties, so. It was the beard. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, okay. So I just, I did just look it up. Ryan Pavey, the actor, is 30. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that works. But I just think that's so funny because I thought he looked so much older than 25 when they first started talking about that. I was yeah. like, really? You know, and I, honestly, I would have pegged Ryan Pavey to be, you know, a little younger than 25. <laughs> oh, really? See, that's funny. See, I would have guessed older. I would have guessed someone in his 30s. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, handsome uh, man, regardless. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh... Oh, and... Where were we? And while Faison was at the PCP, ah. Sam and Patrick confronted him. Oh, that was great. Not even that. I mean, that was good, but Sam and Patrick's conversation right after they spoke to Faison mm -hmm. was so it, intense. It was. And it's like, on the one hand, it's like, you know, you have Patrick who is clear, clearly, you know, has some kind of hatred and regret for not telling Sam, even though he wanted to, or at least I assumed he wanted to, you know, but, oh, you yeah, know. I think, he, I think he's felt guilty about it for a while, and you yeah. sort of hinted at it here and there, they would kind of, you know, she would bring Jason up and passing or something, and it would, you know, cut to Patrick's, you know, angst-ridden face. Um, but I gotta say, I'm kind of with Sam on this one, like, I get why Patrick didn't tell yeah. her, and I don't, I don't exactly fault him for that, but, oh my god, I just felt for Sam, can you imagine finding out that someone you loved was alive for months, and you weren't there for them, you didn't know you couldn't get to them, like, I mean, that's just, that's harsh, that is, yeah. that is awful. Yeah. And she, I mean, I've, I've always thought Kelly Monica was great, but oh, yeah. she did a fantastic job with those scenes. She did. Day. Oh, she did. <laughs> oh, man. And and at the same time as Sam and, and everything is going down with the cops, Patrick goes over to the floating rib and has a drink with Carly and tells Carly pretty much everything that he t was able to tell Sam. Mm -hmm. And Carly took it differently than Sam. She did. It's like, it's like, I, I mean, because, because when it comes to these characters and whether or not Jake, you know, you know, when it comes to Patrick's pretty much, yeah, being forced to not say anything about Jason, otherwise, you know, you have Victor Cassidy led WSB down people's throats and not in the good way. You know, Carly seemed a little bit more understanding. I think she has grown as a person. And I think it's hilarious because yeah. I would never have guessed that that would be how Carly would have reacted to that news. Yeah. You know, Carly, I would have expected Carly's reaction to be like sort of like Sam's, mm -hmm. but like even angrier. Yeah. If that makes sense. Because Sam was, you would tell, was just totally heartbroken and devastated and then furious. Um, but but it came from I think a place of real like hurt and heartbreak, and I yeah. think Carly's Carly I would have imagined would have been you know just even more vicious, um, and so I was surprised that Carly seems to have you know matured and grown as a person because she handled that so much better than I would have expected from her. Yeah, I know it's like, huh. I mean, and, and Carly and Jason go back even further than Jason and Sam do. Oh, yeah. I mean, hell, I mean, I, I remember back when they were, you know, kind of just starting their, their 
big best friendship thing back in the late nineties. Barely remember it, but you know. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I still remember scenes where Jason was bouncing baby Michael on his knee. All right, <laughs> that that's how long ago I was watching. Um, uh, but so you know they have the history there, and I think maybe it's because of that. Maybe because of what Jason what Jason's life had been like, you know, with the mob and the understanding that, yeah, if you say something, somebody else would hurt your family members or what have you or their family members. I ha- I, I want to believe that that's, it's that understanding that kind of tempered Carly's reaction a bit. Yeah, true. I mean, which she does... by that logic, Sam should also have that same knowledge because, well... You know, she's been around. You know, been around Jason. She was married to Jason. She's been with her, been around with Sonny and that whole gang for obviously not as many years as Carly has, but for a good amount of time. I do think there's a place though where logic no longer enters into the equation. Right, and and that's where I can give you know a lot more of leniency in Sam's case in particular because she was married to him. She loved him. She had a kid with him. Mm-hmm. So that that's a little bit more, but I think once she calms down, she'll realize and she'll understand. Okay, yeah, he he had no choice. I understand now. It hurt like a bitch, but you know, Great Uncle Victor was a dick. So, and, and I do think that uh, similarly to the situation with um, Molly, and Alexis, and Rick. Jason turning out to be alive is going to go a long way towards fixing Sam and Patrick's friendship. Oh, yeah, definitely. Eventually. Yeah. Um, and real quick, speaking of the Davis girls, mm-hmm. I'm just going to reiterate, where the fuck is Christina? Yeah. She, they've, they've mentioned her a time or two uh, in passing lately. Um, and, uh, you know, Alexis... <laughs> When she went to go see Julian and she said, you know, something's the matter with my daughter. And he assumed it was Sam. And she said, I said, my daughter, not ours. You know, it could be, do do you not think it's Christina because you've never met her? You know, or Molly because whatever. And I was just like, yes. Oh, okay. So Alexis does remember her daughter exists. Awesome. Um, And of course, Lindsay Morgan is uh, busy uh, starring on The 100 on The CW. Go watch it. It's wonderful. So she can't come (laughs) back as Christina right now. You know, she's otherwise engaged. Um, But I just really, really want them to recast her and get her back to town. Because not only is she wonderful, and I just adore Christina um, for her own sake, but she's also, you know, um, very important to multiple family units and could be super involved in a bunch of different plots going on and I just wish she was in town right now to support her family and of course you know have her own storyline um but you know Michael's not Michael sorry Sonny's sons are not his only children you know where's Christina and all this with her father going to jail where's Christina when her little sister has lost her father where her older sister loses her husband um and her mom you know, is dealing with Julian, like, I just, I think it's a, cr- a crime that Christina is not here for all this. Yeah, and, and speaking speaking of Alexis and, and dealing with things, she's also dealing with Ned, and Ned is dealing with Olivia. I, I have to say, I kind of feel bad for Olivia. Cause, yeah, Because yeah. it's like, oh, It's very cute, and it's, it's funny because I really love, um, this storyline, which surprises me because I don't want to say I don't care about Ned, but, you know, Ned has been on and off the canvas for a while, mostly off. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with all these other characters that I love so much, I'm a little less, um, you know, in tune with with uh, with Ned and his storyline. But I find, you know, this whole thing with him and Olivia to be actually really cute and really sweet. And it's this nice kind of lighter background storyline, you know, supporting storyline that I'm kind of enjoying. Oh, yeah. But then I'm having this issue with the fact that Olivia and Johnny is one of my favorite couples from GH, like, ever. Oh, yeah? And with him 
back on the canvas right now, even though he's in jail. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, is Johnny gonna get out of jail sometime? Is Johnny gonna com- be coming back to the show for real? Can Johnny and Olivia get back together? And so I can't 100 percent get behind Olivia yeah. and Ned because I'm just so excited for Olivia and Johnny to even just have screen time. Like maybe she'll go see him in jail. I don't know. I just really liked them together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> This is very difficult for me. Yeah, it is. And then, oh, God, and Alexis with Julian, and, and she and Ned have the fight about him, and mm. they make up, and, oh, uh, you know, I, I, I am just imagining some fucking douche bro watching the, the Olivia-Ned plotline and be like, she got friend-zoned! She keeps getting friend-zoned! I'm gonna, you I... know, it's funny because Alexis and Ned... While they do have this like tremendous history, they're they're kind of each other's safe choice. Like they've kind of fallen back on each other. Yeah. Because you know Ned tried for Olivia and she shot him down, and Alexis tried it with Julian and Julian tanked it for himself. You know, so they both I think really want someone else, but Julian has a hell of a lot of work to do mm-hmm. to earn Alexis's trust back. And, and the last time Ned knew, Olivia yeah, shot Olivia him down. Olivia wasn't interested, right. So yeah. Olivia needs to speak up. Yes, she does. It's like, oh. please speak up. You know, and then... So uh, but yes, with that, we are about up on time. And somebody before the show was saying we couldn't do like two and a half, three weeks of show in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was skeptical, and... Um... Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's things we missed. I am yeah. sure. Oh, pretty sure. Pretty sure there are. Um, I mean, even with me looking at at the uh, the cheat sheets that I use here, yeah. you know, there's oh. probably something. TJ and his dad. Yeah. That mess. Oh yeah. Jordan what? and Sean. Oh Can yeah. Do it in like a minute or less. Yes, we could do it in about a minute or less. Uh, basically, TJ knows everything that happened, with with uh you know uh Jordan, his dad, and and Sean, um. You know, they cheated. Uh, his dad found out. His dad went berserk. Sean defended himself. And then right after that, uh, the enemy attacked. Uh, and and that's all that happened there. And Well, well, all that happened. Well, can I just say, though, mm-hmm. that that leaves the door open for Sean's – not Sean's uh, – TJ's dad totally still being alive. Oh, because totally. Sean never saw the body. Yeah. He was told that he was dead after – he woke up after several days after that fight. So it could totally be that his dad was maybe they they said he was dead so that they could send him on a secret special op mission or something like that. And he's going to pop up soon. It could be. And and Jordan was also fired from the FBI for ba- pretty much right. botching the undercover assignment. So I wonder how that's going to turn out. I don't know. And um, TJ, weirdly, I think it just – Quickly, I think it's a little strange how they're all talking about how TJ's dad was such a hero because he was a soldier and how he died doesn't negate that fact. And I'm like, you know, he did try to murder Sean in cold blood, guys. So I'm not yeah. sure what kind of message you're sending by reassuring TJ that his dad is a hero. But cool. I guess we'll see how that plays out. Yes. So with that, yeah, we, I, I think that was maybe about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Nice. <laughs> Oh, and and uh, so so I think we do have everything. Yes, that is great. I hope, and we and <laughs> we probably missed something else, you know. And people can let us know about that as well. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Remember redribbonreviewers.wordpress.com to go check out check out the other people that have uh, put stuff up there. Check out the links for HIV AIDS awareness link and all of that. Um, you can learn a little bit more. And if you're if you're a producer yourself, whether you do podcasts, internet videos, what have you, um, you know, talk to the guy who does it. His name is Eli. He's known as the Cartoon Hero. Um, I want to say it's a Cartoon Hero guy on Twitter. Um, talk to him, and uh, you know, he he'll he's typically very open about who who he has put up there. Uh, I know in the past few years I've put up something. I think there was an episode of Fort Charlie podcast that was up there last year. Uh, I probably among my other podcasts as well, but um, again, go check it out. 
go go educate yourself and if you can donate to a worthy cause that's going to be that that's working towards a cure for hiv and aids you know and then it could very well be like two or three kids in in a college laboratory because they from the news stories i've read over the years they seem to be making more progress than the national cor- i want to say corporations but no than the national organizations that are doing it but still throw money at it more research is always needed always welcome until we find a goddamn cure that works and sticks you know those those are my requirements <laughs> Oh, so again, so thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to bug Julia on the social media, where could we find her? Please come bug me on the social media. Uh, I am gh hyphen musings on Tumblr. Sweet. And if you wanted to poke at me on social media, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblrs at gomer 21 X. You can find more of my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, which at this point, my newest uh, video review of Royal Kill should be live. Go check it out. Uh, it's been a while and it shows, <laughs> admittedly. But I hope you guys enjoy that as well if you guys go watch that. And uh, as far as everything else, that's in the uh, post-show bumper if you want to donate to Patreon or whatever. Uh, So thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Julia, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is The Complex by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.